Ambition is, let's win the league. You know, that's what we want to do. Get promoted um, and push ourselves forward. I'll be gobsmacked if we don't win it. And then I'll put my cock on the block and say, I think we will win it. Yeah, there's no time to waste. We need to you know, get up as quick as we can. Like mentioning names, there are six, seven, eight big clubs who have got the same ambitions as we got, and that's to win the league. Hopefully, they can be part of history and help, help us pick up the West Ham Trophy in May. It's got to be done this year, and unfortunately, that's the be on end of it. Can't come short this year. As the season moved into September, the Devon side would slip to second in the table after being comfortably beaten 2-0 at Bridgewater Town, and with it end their 24-match unbeaten run in the league. Bridgewater are a hard team to play against. We, we have always struggled against Bridgewater. Um, I'm not sure why, but they just seem to be that team that we sort of were never going to blow away. Um, they've got a lot of fight in them, so they don't roll over easy. It's great to go on long winning runs and if you go the season unbeaten then fantastic but let's face it with grassroots football it's not going to happen you know you're going to get days where two or three of the players aren't at their maximum okay last year last week maybe five or six weren't quite at their maximum sometimes don't mean it's in a bad way it's nice to have a defeat now and again you know it brings you back down to earth you know you have to do the little things that you don't necessarily usually do. Digging deep for 90 minutes, sometimes that brings you back down to earth, that not every game you're going to have your own way. Koch was on holiday, um, on an all-inclusive getting fatter. But you're playing against two big centre-halves, and the ball didn't stick, kept coming back. Um, we defended, give two shit goals away, I remember that day. Um, but we didn't do enough, you know. We deserved to lose that game. Funny enough, I didn't think we played that bad. It was difficult wasn't the end of the world. You're not going to go all season generally by, you know, not losing. So we, you know, we try to like dust ourselves off and then go on another eight match, 10 match run without losing. It was a frustrating day, um, but it was vital that come off the back of that result that we then get back to winning ways again. Yeah, it was an eye opener to say, right, we got, we, we still got a season on our hands here. We got, we got, we got a year's worth of football here. Um, we ain't just gonna we ain't just gonna turn everyone over. Um, we we got some games on our hands, definitely. Back on home soil, the club have the chance to forget about their league campaign as the FA Cup makes a welcome return as they face Murphy Town, who play two leagues higher in the Southern Premier League, the League Parkway. One day, hope to occupy. We, we know their strengths, we know their weaknesses, no, like no doubt they do ours. Um, I had a few words with the manager just now, he's, he's very aware of what we have and therefore he's done his own work at the same time. But listen, they're two leagues above us, but it's, it's a good test for my individuals to, to go and test themselves against opponents at the level that they want to be at. So it makes it interesting for a good game.
A 1-0 defeat to their Welsh opponents would see the club exit the competition but make over £6,000 in prize money and again show that on the pitch the club can compete with higher league opposition. Very disappointed, I think. I felt we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and it, it had a classic feel of a proper FA Cup tie um, which is what we wanted obviously for the, for, the, for the entertainment for the spectators but listen we've gave a very good account of ourselves here today and their manager was very complimentary and said we're better than some of the teams in their league and listen that's the level we aspire to get to is to have games like that week in week out listen we're very very disappointed the boys are despondent in there but we'll pick ourselves up and we'll go to street Wednesday night where we hope to Get, get back in the winning ways, obviously in the league after the Bridge, Bridgewater defeat. It was a very tough game, very tough game and to be fair I've seen a couple of videos and, and I expected nothing less really. i um, really impressed with the way Plymouth went around about the game, the way they actually played the game and, and as a non-league game goes I bet it was a good game to watch. Tough to take in the end, <coughs> um, one lapse one laps in play, I'd say that it's the difference between two divisions for us. It was a good test, a test to see where we are at as a team um, against a very, very good side, a good footballing side. So, and do you think Street now there's more emphasis on that game just to, to get back in the it's swing another, of it? Another game, isn't it? It's another game. It's a league game. That we play like we did today. We win 90% of the games that we're going to play. Um, we're not going to win every game this season, let's be honest. There's too many good teams around. Bradford are free scoring. Bitten are another outstanding team. And Bridgewater proved that they're a good side. But to be fair, they only really had two shots against us, didn't they? And they were both mistakes by us. So I wouldn't really say that, you know what I mean? It is what it is. As the club exit the competition, it would be another high quality game of football for the supporters to watch and the fans have enjoyed seeing the club's profile raised in recent years, which has coincided with the appointment of new chairman, Mark Russell. A couple of seasons ago, um, we were looking for sponsors, basically. Um, Stuart Cadmore at the time approached me and said he maybe had somebody who was possibly interested. Um, we said, oh, let's jack up a meeting. Within five, 10 minutes of the meeting, I, I could quite sense there was something a little bit more remark. I think he, he looked at it as an opportunity possibly to get involved with Parkway. I think he went away, had a little think. We had a little think. We had another meeting. Uh, we looked, we got on, got on well. Suggested what he would come in and take over as chairman because um, we were actively looking for a, a chairman. And he took the rule on and, and the rest, as you say, is, is history. It's about stability and that's, that's what, you know, I wanted to bring a stability to the football club where we could progress onwards. You know, the, the football club was absolutely stable where they were, but would they have been able to progress to the same level without the business mentality? And that's, that, that's what, you know, I've bought, I, I think I've bought to the football club is actually the business side. We were basically um, four or five volunteers doing it in our spare time. And we hadn't, and no, it's no, no disrespect, disrespect to anybody, there was never a plan to move forward. It was a case of, okay, let's see we finish this year, let's see we finish next season, let's see, and so on and so forth. Mark's come in, got the idea, this is what he wanted to do. Everybody got on board of it and had, you know, we're all singing from the same homepage. And we've got a short term, a medium term, a long term plan. And if you haven't got a plan to work to, it's very, very difficult in any walk of life to achieve anything. I'm proud to be the chairman of Plymouth Parkway. Um, I do thoroughly enjoy it. 
Um, and, you know, but I also know that I am the sort of person that the minute I don't feel that I'm helping the football club progress, I will look to move on because to me, you know, the football club is the main priority. Um, irrelevant of the people around it, actually the football club and the supporters are the most important people at Plymouth Parkway. Not me, Jez, Jenny, Gaz, Lee, or any other players. It's the, the, the club as a whole is much more important than any one individual. Might be in five years time, somebody else comes in and takes it further. But as I've already said, it's still Plymouth Parkway what's going on up. It's not, it's not Jez Baggett, it's not um, Mark Russell, it's Plymouth Parkway. And for me, that's why we are successful. With success and underlying ambition for the club, they would look to get back to winning ways in the league with a midweek visit to the tannery to face street. A hard fought victory on the night with Aaron Bentley on the score sheet and the fullback who left to play higher league football with Truro City last season couldn't resist the lure back to his hometown club. When Aaron left to go to Truro, people gave him grief for it. Um, you can't give someone grief for wanting to push himself at a higher level. He, he realised that the grass wasn't greener and, and we welcomed him back with open arms. He, he's, he's a good player, Aaron, um, and, and a lovely kid with it at the same time. Aaron's a great lad and a very good um, footballer. Um, very dominant in the air. He's got a great, great passing range, short, medium and long and he, he gives us a threat going forward in the 18-yard box, but also brilliant in terms of defending set-pieces and a very good footballer. No, I am, I am very calm and a quiet person, probably boring everyone to say, but I, I don't care what I achieve personally, whether I score 20 goals or anything, I just want to win and I want, I want to win the league, I want to win the Vaz, whether well, that will happen or not. I, I, I couldn't care about personal accolades, I just want to be part of a successful team, really. Once again, another lovely, lovely guy, but he's, he's turned out to be a really good fullback. And he's cemented that fullback role he's own at the moment, although he can be versatile and play in other positions. For me, he is our right back at the minute. He's Rodo, isn't he? Um, now again, good mate of mine outside of football as well. Um, yeah, top, top player. Defends, defends for his life and he gets forward really well. I think he's enjoying that right back role to be honest here. Um, like say converted from centre half but he seems to again just fell on his feet there and found himself a decent little position. Lee once said he has the best diag in world football. Um, we'll leave that at that but yeah it's nice to play with him behind me because you know he's solid defensively, doesn't get beat often 1v1 and um, yeah he's very good on the ball actually as well. Everyone's just excited to see what the future holds and I think this year we're, we're on to win. I think this, this, this has got to be the year. With three points picked up on the road against Street, 
the Yellows would top the table after playing six games, one more than the chasing pack. They would look to make it back-to-back -back wins in the Western League as newly promoted Kingsham Town made the journey to Belitho Park. The team's mini dip in form would see two valuable points dropped as they would let a three goal lead slip and along with it their 100% home record. Despite the result, it would be another healthy crowd at Belitho as the club have built a loyal following, thanks in large to the Plymouth Parkway Supporters Club who this season are chaired by Parkway fanatic Gavin Lloyd. Um, it was an idea of uh, Stu Cadmore probably three, four, five seasons ago now. Um, obviously we've got a decent following here um, and we kind of used to get into our separate little groups um, but Stu had an idea to get everybody together and into a supporters club so he got flyers made up and got everybody involved and we've just kind of it's grown from there really but in the, in, in, you know, in, in the beginning it's just about getting people together and involved and it's evolved since then so we raised a lot of money for um, ground improvements for the club. I mean, we've bought the, um, or put some money towards the, the new tractor the ground the groundsman uses. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's just a case of getting people together and have a bit more of a fan community spirit around the place, really, rather than just being segregated. You know, when it was first talked about, you know, at the time I was a little bit, mm, not sure. Suddenly we had 10 supporters, then we had 20, you know, now it's something like 60 who go to regular meetings, who fill the coach every week. You know, we, when we go to these away clubs, we boost their gates by having a supporters club. And to be fair, I am very supportive of it and I appreciate everything they do. They help out with, with funding that we need a couple of new strimmers or we need various bits and pieces. The supporters club help out and I'm very grateful, very. We value the supporters club, um, you know, we value every supporter that comes through the gate and that really shows where Plymouth Parkway is in comparison to a lot of other clubs at our level um, because you look at average attendances, we have really good average attendances and that's the nucleus that we have a good attendance. You look at quite a few of our competitors in the leagues, SWPL and the Western League, their attendances are, are actually quite low as an average. Our nucleus of supporters that will turn up to every game is in excess of 100 that will turn up whatever the weather, whatever, you know, whatever's happening in their lives, they'll be there. And they'll be there because they are Plymouth Parkway. The supporters club meet every two months 
and with a trip to title challengers Bitten on the weekend, the talk of this meeting is about last Saturday's 3 all draw with Keensham Town. It's, it's, um, it's something that can't be repeated too many times over a season. I think um, Lee and the team would be very disappointed with that. You know, to have a 3 0 lead at home is something that you don't throw away. And they're the kind of games that will make the difference at the end of the season. Um, if there's ever a game you're going to look back on this season, it'd be a scoreline like that where it's 3 all, and really we should have tucked that game away. Um, so it's something that I don't think we'll repeat, um, but it's something that we do definitely regret, that's for sure. I don't think any team should uh, lose a 3-0 lead, to be honest with you. We, we, we have to learn how to see out, see out a game. You know, it's, but that's one of those things. We didn't lose it, we got a point. So we just move on and make sure that doesn't happen again. Last, last 20 minutes, pick it, just long ball it. But just, you know, I was just wanting them to win games. Yeah, I know I said, we, you have to take a, a hit. But sadly, the, the heart just, just went. You could tell by Lee's face, I'm not remember when he was in here, he, his face was like thunder. You see he was angry, you know, free up, true's button. I think um, when Kingsham got a goal back just after we'd gotten 3-0 up, then we had a goal disallowed. The comments of, between myself and my friends and my wife and whatever else was, next goal was going to be key to this. Unfortunately, went to Kingsham and then you could see the pressure mounting and mounting. I believe we can win at Bitten. However, it is a key game for the season. Well, it's better, I think it's better to have to go somewhere like that uh, than a, a lesser team. So I think it's, it's, it could work in our favour to bounce back because we know we've got to be the best. Um, and we know what to expect from them. We know how they play. I know they've lost a couple of players, but they've still got some, uh, they're a good side. Um, the results prove that. So I think it's, it's good in a way that we go into somewhere like that to come off the back of that uh, not defeat, but you know, but dropping dropping two points we shouldn't have done. On a perfect Saturday afternoon for football, the Devon side make the trip to Bitten for a crucial top of the table away day clash, looking to put recent results behind them and show their title challenge credentials.
A big statement made on the way soil would see the club recapture their early season form and stay top of the pile and in the process move seven points clear of challengers bitten. Listen, listen to me, stop changing. If ever there was a fucking bounce back ability from one fucking week to the next where you execute a game plan, you come to a potential fucking title rival in their own backyard and you dish up everything that we've asked of you, there's a fucking credit to you as footballers, I'm telling you now. Because that there from minute one to minute 90 was fucking faultless. Absolutely fucking faultless. In every bit of detail we've given you, you fucking, you've carried it out absolutely exemplary. To come here and do that there, listen, teams don't fucking do that. They don't do that. But that's the, listen to me, that's the fucking levels that we set when we want to set them. Okay, we've come up here, where influential players look fucking cracky, missing. Listen, this squad is full of fucking depth and full of quality. Okay, listen, I could not be any more fucking pleased. Elliot's come in, people would have questioned that decision. Listen. We'll find out in a minute. Pops and Listen, hey, before I hand you over the fucking coal, well done, absolutely outstanding. Puts us back on track. we we'll never know when they're fucking coughing. Well done, Cole. Well done. Listen, there's, there's one thing we've got to make sure now. When we're doing the game plans and how we're going to approach games, etc. Don't matter if it's Kane Show at home or doing at home or doing away, fucking bitten on. You listen today. You're fucking intensity. You're switched on. You took every bit of detail. And you've gone and absolutely ran all over them because of the detail, and you execute it. Now we've got to make sure next week, hell on away, you're going to have information and detail that you have to execute again, no matter who the opposition are. If we do that week in, week out, we'll be where we want to be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> A man of the match performance on the day for summer signing Biddy Palfrey. And it was a signing that was maybe one of Parkway's biggest in recent years. After the 21 year old joined from Southern Premier League side, Truro City. He's the future. Um, and those are the sorts of players I think we need to get in the round now. So he's probably early 20s, I think, is, is Bill in there. Yeah, it's, it's all about development for Bill. And he's good enough now, you'll know, only get better with age and experience. He, for me, he's like Aaron Ramsey, uh, unsung hero, central midfield Rambo, phenomenal. His vision, his calmness on the ball, his ability to play left, right, backwards or forwards, pick out a pass, uh, short, long, mid, whatever, and to strike as well. Yeah, fantastic. Who, who wouldn't want him in the team? Superb player. He was one of our targets straight away that we knew we wanted to get him in for this year. And we had to work hard to get him, but I'm really glad and I'm sure Billy doesn't regret it at this moment. For me, he's a terrific player. He's a nice lad as well. Always says, you know, politeness for me for a lot of players when they join a club as well is a big thing. Some, of the, some players come maybe a little bit, you know, you're not sure about them. He's a nice lad. Good player. Good player. Yeah, I've been really impressed with him. So we had that sort of hole in there because of Popple leaving. Was, uh, we sort of needed a player to screen off, be a bit more defensive. I think Billy's made it his own. And yeah, he's had some real good performances, some MOMs where, yeah, you can't not give it to him because of how good he's been in that role. It's a not very really nice part in a game that people don't want to do, he's willing to do and sacrifice himself for us and, and the team to go and get the job done and just sit in there and do the dirty work. And it's what he does brilliantly and it don't go unnoticed inside the dressing room, I know that. I think Billy will be a top, top midfield player. And I'm going to stick out, I know he's young now. I think if he carries on the way he is, he'll be the best around, I really do. Class act, mate. Class act, on and off the field. He, he's the type of player that you want to bring to football clubs. His age, his ability, the way he applies himself. He's just, he's just a model, model player.
the club would leave Britain in good spirits and as the season moved into October, they would start the month with another away fixture, this time at Morehouse Lane against ninth place Hallam. Another five goals will be scored on the road and keep the club top of the table. Three of the goals will be scored by the left foot of Mikey Williams as the winger announced himself in this season's league campaign. The fans' favourite has been a revelation at the club since signing back in 2017. Again, he comes under that banner of main man, if you like. Um, a go-to for me at times when the chips are down and things ain't working for us. I'm always looking to him to dig us out of trouble or get us something. Um, and he's done it time and time and time again. I mean, he's a winger who scores 20 goals a year. So they're, they're worth a weight in gold. Worth a weight in gold. And he probably also gets the same, if not more, number of assists. So he's doing his job, isn't he? Over, over, over a nine-month season, he's definitely earning his money. Anyone who knows Lee knows what he's like in terms of you know texting, calling, that hounding. And I had a few options of deciding what to do. And uh, he asked me to you know go meet him for a pint down the Royal Room Yard. And when when Lee gets talking, it's very tough to say no to him. So uh, yeah, we sort of done the deal there, and then and that was it. Just a part way player. He he's probably got to be, if not the best player I've I've coached. But when you've got a Mikey Williams in your team, and sometimes you could be not, not, at, not at it, not playing your best, but you just know you've got to keep a clean sheet because Mikey Williams will unlock the back door, whether it's an assist or whether it's putting the ball in the back of the net himself, which he's done on many occasions for us. Yeah, he's our, he's our best player. He's our best player. For the last two and a half years I've been at the club, he's our most important player. Um, he turns up in every big game. He turns up in the shit games. He don't say fuck all. He goes around his business quietly. He's got a lovely little way around him. I like him a lot off the pitch as well. He's got a nice way around him. Um, for me, he's been our best player and he is our best player and he's our main man. Always has been. Brother Mikey. <laughs> no, yeah, Mikey's, we all know what Mikey's like. He's, he's brilliant. I'm gonna get some stick for praising now, aren't I? Uh, but yeah, Mikey's brilliant. He makes everything. Everything comes from him, really. I think it would be him, him off, off carts, and that. I think yeah. he's the talisman, if you like, isn't he? Fantastic player, whether it be at the back, wide right, in the middle, up front, or wherever it is, he can play anywhere. And he's just, he's an asset to the club, asset to the club, and he is our star player. He just makes it look so easy what he does. You know, it, it, it's, it's not so fancy that it looks like hard to do 
it, but if you tried it yourself, you wouldn't be able to do it, and he just makes it look so easy. Um, he glides past players, drops shoulders. Um, yeah, brilliant player, brilliant player, a big player for us. There's always that thought, you know, Michael gets a bit of magic at something at one game, and yeah, it can be tough, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I'd much rather it was like that, you know what I mean? I, I enjoy that sort of feeling that, you know, Mikey's you know, one of our important players. He can, he can do a bit here, you know what I mean? We're relying on him. I quite like that. When he wants to turn it on, he can turn it on. Um, he hasn't scored all the goals he's scored for fluking it or not being, not being a good player. Um, but yeah, outside of football, like you say, he's, he's probably the nicest man on a football pitch. I wouldn't say boo to a goose, really. But yeah, again, another credit to the football club. Top player and top lad. The club would exit Hallen and the attention would shift away from the league as they would begin their involvement in this season's FA Vars campaign. A competition that all non-league clubs can dream of the final and playing at the home of football. The Vars is the competition that you go into thinking this is our chance of winning a national competition. Um, you know, so I think you know, trying to go do well in the Vars is, it was, was, is, a, is a big, you know, a big part of the season. For me, it would be lovely to go to Wembley, family, supporters, what, what a day, you know, little club like Parkway. We feel we are, we underachieve in it. Um, so I'm hoping to put that right this year, where hopefully the football club can, can go on a run in that. Um, because it is a competition that's winnable. It, it genuinely is, um, obviously with the luck of the draws, hopefully having a majority of them at home like Willem did last year. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that competition this year. I've been in these leagues now for the last three years, three and a half years. Like I've never done well enough in the Vars for the teams that I've played with and managers that I've played under. I've never done well enough, always underachieved. Yeah, I just, you just really wanted to go a bit further this year and take that one step further. I think we're, we're confident because it's our level and above. I think we're backing ourselves to be to win. We know that no matter who who comes down or wherever we go, we're always going to back ourselves to win against anyone we play. So yeah, I think there's a, there's a quiet sense of optimism that we can go and do something in this. We have massive games then, and they're not massive games as in standard or big crowds and all that, but they're big games to us. They're big games for the level that we play at. Do you know what I mean? In a national tournament, you know when you're playing it to a side where it means something. For us, though, we can't look too far ahead, though. The first stop for the club in this season's competition would be Hampshire, as they would look to avoid defeat in the first round to Wessex League outfit Romsey Town. <laughs> The Yellows would safely progress to the next stage of the competition with a 3-1 win and would look forward to another away trip to Hampshire in the second round as the draw would see them take on another Wessex League outfit, Brockenhurst. With the focus shifting back to the league, the club would return home after three gruelling away journeys. They would also look to get back to winning ways at Belifo after no win in Plymouth in their past two games as they prepare for the visit of 10th place Shepton Mallet. Lee, only four points separate the top three in the league. Is today a must-win game? 
I think the next seven days is a critical part of the season. I don't know, I'm not just going to speculate about today, obviously. Over, over Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Saturday, the, the, the whole of the top ten seemed, however the fixtures have panned out, all seem to be playing each other. Well, it's very important we concentrate on ourselves and do our business, but Shepton will be no mugs, they won't roll over. They're coming off the back of a little bit of a dip of form, whereas up to September they were flying, and now they, I think they've lost their last four on the spin, and hopefully today will be their fifth on the spin. Please welcome onto the bridge your teams, Shepton Mallet and Plymouth Parkway. I thought we were excellent from start to finish. Um, barring the goal we conceded from the dead ball, I thought it was, an, as you just said there, I think it was a very professional performance. We used our subs well, but the 11 that started, they need to take credit to come off the back of a long journey to Southampton midweek. With one change within that 11 that started up there and going to shut up, it, it only highlights a, 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 how much quality we have in this team. So Bradford drew two all with Cribs today, which puts you back top of the table. So going in, as we mentioned before, the busy period you've got now in trying to win all these games, do you think the pressure's off you a little bit? Pressure's always on us, we're Plymouth Parkway, and the reality is we're expected to win. Um, I don't think so. Listen, leagues ain't won in October and we won't get carried away with that one win there. And obviously uh, the other teams have dropped points today because that will be us at, at, at some weeks within the season where we'll drop points and they'll win. That's league campaigns. and. But for us, all we can do is keep one game at a time and just keep winning and on to the next one now, which is obviously a local derby to whet our appetite on Tuesday night. With some fine goals on show, it was another good day for the defence. And at the heart of it lies a wealth of experience in the centre-back pairing of Rob Farkins and Nick Milton. I spoke to Lee when he first came in. Um, he asked me to come in. Um, it wasn't the right time. Uh, Travelling was a factor for me at the time, I was living in Stafford, um, so it wasn't the right time, but I knew, I obviously knew what the club was about before I come, um, and it was a no-brainer for me when the phone call came second time round. I played to my old man, who put his manager at Stoke Gabriel against Bobman in the pre-season friendly when Lee was assistant down there with um, Darren Gilbert, and from that game took me down to Bobman with him, played a season down there. And when he took over down here, he took the call and yeah, we agreed on a deal. And I haven't looked back since, I think as long as he wants me, I'll stay here for as long as I can. Nick is again a very good footballer, very experienced and, he, and he's very composed. He brings that composure alongside Farkings. He, he's very educated around the game. He educates players as and when, when we're playing, you know, come in, come in here, can you drop off, etc. Um, so yeah, Nick's a good character to have around as well, change room as well, very experienced. Rob's a winner, mate. Rob can rub off on people the wrong way. Listen, me and him have it all the time. But let me tell you, I'm not swapping for no one around this area. Not a fucking chance, will I? Because he's a winner. He put his head in. He put his head on the line. Lee's a wrong me instead about signing him. About thing he has to go and get. I said he's a big player. Go and get him, and he got him. And he's been different class. Between me and him, you've got Cracky in the middle. You got Carts up top. It's a real senior core spine to the group and. I think going back to minus partnership, it you just got to compliment each other all around the pitch. And Rob's more dominating than I am. I'll compliment him by making sure I get round every time, even though he wins 99% of his headers. 
you've just got to make sure you're around each other and I think we've done that well this season. You've got to have adaptability, do you know what I mean? I'm more suited to the right side, how I shape up. He, he, he suits playing to the left-hand side as much as he doesn't like it. It suits his game. Um, so you've got to have a fine balance between complementing each other. And I think we both complement each other. Look, we argue a lot. That's just part and parcel of a good relationship, I suppose. It's quite healthy. Um, but yeah, we travel down. We, we have got a strong relationship, really, yeah. Oh, they're solid, you know, they're, they're, they're solid. They're, they're two, they're two you've got your old school centre half who, who likes to, who loves defending in Farkins, and then you've got your ball playing one in Nick Milton. Okay, they, I'd like them both to have an extra little bit of pace, but they ain't got it. But what they lack in pace, they've got in no way in their heads. It's going to go all the way to the wire. It'll go to the last game of the season, 100%. There'll be no done by. April, it'll be, it's all the way again. Uh, it's going to be another long, long season. Bad weather would interrupt league fixtures against teams in the top six. And their next outing would take place in the FA Vars second round. The club would make the long trip to Hampshire to face Brockenhurst and look to book their place in the third round of the competition. A solid three win on their travels would see Parkway's name in the hat for the next round and would also see the good form of left back Ryan Lane continue. The youngster would pick up the Man of the Match award on his birthday, which earned him an expensive drink after the final whistle. I don't think anybody else could have done that. That was real bad. I think it cost them like 40 quid as well. It was just full of everything. But yeah, did it, no problems. I think it was growing up with rugby lads to help me out. <laughs> so me and my dad sponsor him. I think he's just a class act. He obviously come through the ranks at Argyle. I think he probably came off the bench once or twice for professionals. So he's obviously got a um, bit of pedigree. And on his day, I don't think there's many better players around. He's quick, he's strong. Yeah, he, he reads the game well. He's just, yeah, class act. Uh, basically, when I got released, Lee, Lee texted me straight away. Like, so within like, I don't know how he found out, within half an hour, he'd sent me a text saying, um, you know, part way, when you to come down. Um, the, more, the more I got into it, the more I got to know everyone and stuff, yeah, I started to think, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty content here. I think sometimes the frustration is with Ryan, is that you see all this ability, um, technical ability, he's got a good physique as a, as a footballer, he's very powerful in his running, um, he's, he's very good defensively, but yeah, remember what people got to remember, he's, he is still young still, uh, and he's a top, top player, and, and if he could be more consistent game in, game out, then we're looking at a player that will be playing higher level of football than what part we're currently playing. I, I believe he's that good. I feel like my performances have been good and a lot more consistent. Uh, I think that's more well, a lot to do with sort of staying in the same position, you know, making left back my sort of my own um, consistent run of games, not in and out. I think if I'm voting for my player of the season at the moment, 
it, he'd get my vote at the moment. He's fast, he's strong, physical, great on the ball. He's got that, that drive. If I see him drive and I know that he's going you know, to keep the ball and do well with it and I can sort of come off my wing and link up with him. Probably one player that could probably push on and go, go through the leagues is probably him, to be honest with you. Yeah, he's, he's one of the fittest lads, he's technically one of the best and he wears his heart on his sleeve every week and he defends, defends brilliantly. Man, he's been our best player. Um, end of the season comes. Hopefully he's loyal, but he will have every Tom, Dick and Harry sniffing at his door. I've got on really well with the club, you know, made mates here, um, like Kai's, Carts, you know, Lee, got on really well with Lee. Um, the club's got ambitions, you know, we're not stale here, we're not hanging around. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty content here. The club would leave Hampshire and once again be handed another away fixture to face Dorset outfit Hamworthy. But first, it would be back to important league action at Belifel, as the club would welcome Chipping Sopry Town as they look to keep in touch with new Western League pace setters, Bradford Town. It's, it's one of them today where I'll be making sure the mentality of the players is right because for games like this and obviously the conditions ain't going to be easy for anyone. It's about mentality. It's all right rocking up the Brockenhurst and delivering what we delivered last Saturday, knowing that it was a good game against a good team. We have to make them the same, the same mentality against Chippen today. So yeah, I'm expecting a tough game. They won't roll over, as you know, no team does in this league. But yeah, I'm sure mentally we'll be prepared and hopefully our quality is shown through. I'm joined again with manager Lee Hobbs. Lee, from my point of view, it's not the best you've played this season, but ultimately, job done in three points. It's exactly that. Obviously, the conditions were tough. We knew that there before before the game had even started, and arguably it probably shouldn't have been on. We forced the game on. We've got a reward with the three points against a very, very spirited Chip and Sobry team. And now, and now, now our hoodoo of not beating them has now come to an end. So, all in all, it's become a good weekend. This took us three points closer to Bradford. The win would see new signing Craig Duff prove instrumental off the bench as the experience forward adds another dimension to the club's attacking options. We've got a team of nimble small footballers, which is great. You know, I can name three or four of them all in, in that category. But Duffy gives us a little bit of presence in there. Can play just in behind our main striker, if need be, could go up front and play the same role as our lead striker. So He's been a good signing. League action would stay in Plymouth as seven days later, Bitten would arrive in Devon, looking for revenge and to close the gap in the Western League. Win your individual battles, collectively make sure you fucking bang on, don't get on each other's backs and take your fucking moments. Okay, take your moments. It might be a, a game of fine margins today. That ain't a bad team, okay? And like I said to you before the game, They've got to come here and get something, right? The claw back, some, a little bit of ground on us. Give them fucking nothing, right? Nothing. Number 10, Jack Culver. Number 11, Jordan Cup. I'm on the bench.
Listen, hey, 2-2, two, two, all the fucking play for. It's fucking game on here. This is where your character and what, and what good teams find a way to win this game now. And we are a fucking very good team. I said to you last week, we're borderline becoming a, 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 an excellent team. And at the minute, we're a very, very good team. Now we've got to go yeah. and become an excellent team. Spreading game of football earns Parkway a 4-3 victory as the Western League begins to take shape at the top of the table. Some big games are on the horizon in the league and FA Vaz. Can the club keep their fine start to this season's campaign going as winter approaches?